President Trump has a brand new avenue of corruption and legalized bribery that's become a gigantic concern of experts who've been looking at this. President Donald Trump's trips to his golf courses aren't just an opportunity for rest and relaxation. They're also an opportunity for him to rub elbows with corporate lobbyists who pay his clubs millions of dollars in exchange for access to the president. A USA Today investigation has found that members of the clubs Trump has visited most often as president in Florida, New Jersey, and Virginia include at least 50 executives whose companies hold federal contracts and 21 lobbyists and trade group officials. The investigation also found that two-thirds of these lobbyists and executives have played on one of the 58 days the president was there, according to scores they posted online. Trump was caught last month golfing with Prime staffing CEO Mike Fazio after Fazio posted a photo of himself with the president on Instagram. However, USA Today's investigation shows that corporate leaders' access to Trump could be a much broader issue than had been previously reported. For the first time in U.S. history, wealthy people with interest before the government have a chance for close and confidential access to the president as a result of payments that enrich him personally, USA Today writes, quote, uh, it is a view of the president available to few other Americans. Initiation fees for Trump's golf clubs can be priced at over $100,000 and members have to pay thousands more in annual dues as well. Walter Schaub, the former head of the Office for Government Ethics, said that this level of pay-for-play through Trump's golf courses is far beyond the bounds of anything we've seen in recent history. Quote, I think we're all in new territory, he told USA Today. We never thought we'd see anyone push the outer limits in this way. Okay. So, as anybody who is educated on this topic will tell you money in politics is basically the cancer within our system because that makes it so that our government does not represent us it represents the interests of wealthy people billionaires and corporations so that's why you have a situation where congress always gets an approval rating around 15% because everybody knows, even right after an election, people know, okay, I just voted for the lesser of two evils. At least they did in their mind. So that shows you when you have a representative democracy and you get an approval rating of fucking 15% of your elected officials, that means everybody knows on some level, this thing is fucking broken. And it's broken. I mean, you could just follow the money and see why it's broken. The decisions that the representatives are making are serving their donors and their corporate interests. So it's always been bad. It's been bad from the late 1970s and onward with various Supreme Court decisions that have basically ruled that money equals free speech. So, hey, let's go crazy here and have our uh, system totally corrupted by the rich. Now, here's the difference, though, between what Trump is doing and how bad the system is regularly. For other politicians, there's at least some level uh, levels of filtration. So, okay, you get the, the PAC contribution. Well, technically, there can't be any, you know, a coordination between su somebody super PAC and the campaign. So, at least legally speaking, there's a, kind of a buffer there, and you're not allowed to speak to your super PAC, and they're not allowed to speak to you, and so the money that some giant uh, CEO douchebag just gave to the super PAC is not money that can directly affect you in a corrupting way because there's a buffer and there's a level of filtration, so you cannot have direct contact with that CEO. Um, so at least on paper, in theory, hey, this isn't all that corrupt. Now, in reality, it is corrupt. Don't get it twisted. Because a lot of this stuff, while there may not be an official quid pro quo, people know, the politicians know uh, where they're getting their money from. And so it's I scratch your back, you scratch mine. If you donate, they'll look out for you. You don't need the official meeting where Exxon says, oh, by the way, I'm giving you this money because I want you to vote in favor of the corporate welfare check that I get. I want you to vote in favor of the $4 billion I get every year. The politicians know. They don't need that meeting. They get it, okay? But with Trump, he took it a step further. <laughs> of course. He went, uh, you know, from the implicit corruption of the way our system functions to he would he rails against the corruption like he did on the campaign trail, acting like he's above it all. Hilarious. 
They used to rip Hillary Clinton and Ted Cruz and other uh, candidates and say, you guys are puppets of Goldman Sachs. You guys are puppets of Wall Street. Look at the money you're raising. I'm self-financing. By the way, that was never true. He never self-financed his campaign. He was always accepting money from various uh, donors. But he railed against it, and then now, of course, how do we not see it before? The dude owns a zillion golf clubs. Private golf clubs. And in order to be a member, you have to pay over $100,000 initiation, you have to pay your annual dues. Who's going to join these fucking golf clubs? It ain't the average Joe, it ain't the forgotten man that will never be forgotten again, as Trump said. No, it's, it's corporate douchebags. So, you're the CEO of a major corporation. What do you do in this situation? Hey, I could join the golf club. Uh, and then have direct access to the president. And then the same thing with Mar-a-Lago. You know, Mar-a-Lago, the, the, the summer White House or whatever the fuck they call it. People pay their initiation. Trump would, showed up at some random weddings that were happening in Mar-a-Lago. And he'd speak to the people who were members. So, same thing for all of his golf clubs. Oh, you pay the initiation. You get in there. And now we know two-thirds of the fucking executives who are members of his golf clubs just happened to play on the same day that he was there. No, it's not. I'm sure he's not taking meetings from his buddies who are members of his golf club who, where they actually have legit quid pro quos because he's that fucking stupid and incompetent that he would take those meetings. And by the way, again, because he says, oh, this is rest and relaxation. It's all off the record. All off the record. So you don't have, you know how there were White House logs under Obama and this isn't saying Obama's not corrupt. Of course he was. But th there were White House logs, okay, this person and this person came to see me at this time on this day. Uh, so it's all, it's all on record. Here we're talking about a situation where his private golf clubs, his private members, CEOs, executives, corporate douchebags, they show up, they meet with the president, they talk about whatever the fuck they want to talk about, we move along, no meeting ever even happened. I mean, this is government by mob, government by mafia. Because what the fuck do you think is going on at these clubs? It's just a coincidence that all the corporate leaders are members at his golf clubs. It's just coincidence that they almost all were there on days that he was there. And it's just coincidence that he's seen taking pictures with them. You think they're not talking about official government business? Things that would help these corporations? Of course they're talking about it. And you, when you look at Trump's agenda, we know whose side he's on. Whether it's his dumb fucking executive orders or other things. Remember his executive order? For every one new regulation, we must remove two regulations. These guys love that shit. The executives love that shit. The corporate tax rate. We have one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world. We must reduce it. Actually, that's not true. The nominal rate is a high rate, but nobody pays the nominal rate. That's just what it is on paper. The effective rate is one of the lowest rates in the world. The effective rate's 12%. So, oh, look at that. You want to cut corporate taxes as you hang out with your corporate buddies on uh, golf courses. You want to cut regulations. <laughs> Again, another thing that the, your corporate buddies love. So you just want to make this officially a kleptocracy as you give stump speeches and pretend like you're for the average uh, Joe, the little guy. I think what's so amazing is the dichotomy between what he said on the campaign trail and what he's doing as president, and just the fact that he's taken the corruption into overdrive. But again, should we really be that surprised from a guy who ranted against Hillary Clinton and Ted Cruz and other candidates for being corrupt and beholden to Wall Street, and then he appointed Goldman Sachs people to his administration? Even fucking Hillary Clinton would have done like, no, we're not going to put the Goldman Sachs guy in the administration because that's too obvious. We'll go with somebody who uh, is friends with the Goldman Sachs president. And then they will do the bidding of Goldman Sachs. Trump was like, fuck the middleman. Yeah, whatever. I ranted against Goldman Sachs and Wall Street. Now Gary Cohn and Steve Mnuchin are going to have top positions in my administration. Fucking the not just Goldman Sachs guys, former Goldman Sachs guys. One of them was the fucking president of Goldman Sachs, and he took hundreds of millions of dollars as an exit bonus. And we're supposed to believe he's not going to do the bidding of Goldman Sachs and Wall Street. Oh, please, man. So a guy who can do that much of a rank hypocritical move, 
the whole point now of his golf courses and him being there. It's not just that, oh, he's lazy and he's taking all these breaks to go play golf. No, he actually is conducting official business there. He tweeted about that the other day. No, it's a working vacation. Working vacation. And then there were pictures that came out of him on the golf course. But that's right, it was a working vacation. He was working. Working to screw over the American people and do the bidding of Wall Street and big banks. And other corporate douchebags. Ugh. We got to reel this back in, man. And it, look, I don't want to make the mistake of portraying that Trump is the only problem because he's not. We, our system was grotesquely corrupt before Trump. But Trump just goes to show you what happens when the wheels come off. When the wheels come off, anything can fucking happen. And the wheels came off in the late 1970s when the Supreme Court said, yeah, money is free speech, we guess. Well, then by definition, whoever has more money has more speech. Whoever has more money has a louder voice. So that's not equal protection under the law. The voice of a grandma in Cleveland who's poor is not equal to the voice of fucking Sheldon Adelson. This is obvious. But they didn't care. They ruled that anyway. Money equals speech. Unless, of course, you want to buy drugs, then money is not speech. Money is money. Go to try to buy crack and see if they let you buy crack. They won't. Now, according to their logic, though, what do you mean? I'm just giving... Speech. Um, you're allowed to say, I think crack is awesome. That's legal. Well, money is speech, so I'm just giving speech that says crack is awesome. What? Go try to go to a prostitute. See how that works. I'm no, I'm not paying for a blowjob. I'm just saying blowjobs are awesome. This is speech. Money is speech. Weird how the argument's only used in a way that's convenient for uh, billionaires and corporations, isn't it? So ever since then, the late 1970s, the wheels came off, and we implemented a, officially an oligarchy and a kleptocracy. <laughs> and then now, this is the logical conclusion of decades of that philosophy taking hold. <laughs> a reality star buffoon who uh, has a lot of golf courses, corporate idiots and assholes buy access to the president, and then they make their corrupt deals on the course, and rig the government in favor of themselves and against regular people. Doesn't get any worse than this. 